Melendez. Hi, Melendez. Welcome to what show is this? What, we're, what are we doing? Quarantine we're doing Classics. Quarantine Classics. Yeah. Welcome to Quarantine Classics. It must be what night is it? Saturday. Saturday. Night. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I guess well, the uh, thing we always like to say is, uh, "Hi, what are you guys up to?" <laughs> um, that's how we start the show, right? Uh huh. Yeah. George so, said yeah. that in our little uh, test before, just trying to make conversation. And uh, what is everybody up to? Steve, you're moving. Yeah, I'm going to head back to uh, New York City. I've been at uh, my uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law's place for, gosh, four months now. Very oh my cool. God. George, George, have you left the house at all? Have you seen like, people? <laughs> like when we, had our, when we had our small talk up top, you were a little rusty. Uh, uh, and you weren't good to begin with. <laughs> so The only place I've been is there's a, a, there's a, a giant cemetery uh, a few blocks away and I go walking around the cemetery once a day so that's my interaction with people is I'm always six feet above everybody in that cemetery oh, I know I'm safe the, smart just the creep just the creep I'm wow. hoping we can do an episode from there because we can socially distance there maybe that's we can do true. a maybe we can yeah. do an episode yeah I'm sure their wi-fi is great out there <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm currently still in Tom's basement um I keep extending my trip because they keep feeding me meat. Like I eat meat for every single meal. Uh, it's either it's usually uh, burgers for lunch and then steak for dinner. And our, uh, uh, our buddy Tom has had gout more than once, so if that's yeah. any indication, you're not <laughs> he hosts, you're well he hosts, he hosts he hosts an annual um, I guess friend convention where he gets you know maybe like six or seven friends together called Gout Fest. And I think we've done it twice, and he has actually gotten gout both times. <laughs> he so, wasn't even trying. Yeah. He just lived um, up to the I, billing. I do have the meat sweats right now. Um, so uh, pardon me if I'm sweating throughout the show. And I just got back from taking Marty to the vet because he had an ear infection. So oh, it's been a, been a full day, yeah. Um, and then, uh, oh, did, did they check out his penis while you were there? No, nah, at this point, they're like, it's beyond repair. Have you? Because they they actually brought up the fact of uh, amputating it, right? No, I went to, well. I went to a surgeon to get a consultation, and they're like, they said, in some dogs <laughs> that have a a thing with a sheath, we could cut off like the tip of the penis, and that that would help it. But that's not his issue. It's not the length. It's the fact that the the retraction mechanism doesn't work. So were you kind of like were you kind of like patting him on the back there? Like it's not the length. That's not the problem. Uh, yeah, I said. Like, <laughs> I said, don't you worry about that, Mr. Surgeon. He's doing just fine in that department. My boy. Uh, <laughs> yep, real proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have a quick update because um, last night we celebrated Capa de Monte Day, which, of course, John and Johnny, um, the uh, home shopping host that we found back in college, they uh, we, we just rewatched it. Was it for an EP mode episode? Or Yeah, yeah. yeah. With Month Adrian ago, Kiss, so. yeah. And and uh, we realized that they mentioned July 10th and 11th were Capa de Monte Day. They were going to give away this por these porcelain chachas. I don't think they called it Capa de Monte Day. I, th I think they said they were going to be selling some Capa de Monte on July 10th. <laughs> yeah. And then we called it Capa de Monte Day. We decided yeah. to make it a holiday, and I think it extends into today. It's, uh, it's kind of like a, a Capa de Monte weekend. Let me just uh, refresh your memory. I know we yeah. just played this on... Tuesday, but here we go. Hi, I'm John, one of your personal shoppers on America's Value Network, here to tell you about a special hour coming soon. On Friday, July 10th, we're going to have one hour of the fabulous Capitol Monte collection. Beautiful pieces, all specially handcrafted and individually designed, with many new designs at introductory prices, as well as discounted prices on Capitol Monte you've seen before. You're sure to find something special during this hour, so be sure to join us on Friday, July 10th, for a Capitol Monte spectacular on ABN, America's favorite place to shop. Shop. Oh, we should have called it the Capo de Monte Spectacular instead of Day. But oh, next yeah, year. well, yeah. then we could have gotten sued by AVN. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're still going that. strong. Uh, but here's the update. So and last that, that, night, by the way, by the way, that's such a great video too. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely unremarkable, but I just it's remembered a, writing I, I down like, Friday, July 10th. We should celebrate that. I feel like people are watching it and they're like, "When's the funny part happening?" I guess <laughs> the funny part is maybe the uh, the porcelain birds that are yeah. looking at each other yeah. and describing that as a very special item. Yeah, and I think that uh, Capa de Monte, the word is kind of funny too. I think those are the two funny parts yes. of that video. Yeah, okay. it's it's not hilarious, but I think I think for every time a date is mentioned on a VHS tape that we've got, we should just celebrate that as a holiday. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we posted it on social media yesterday, and we're just like, "Happy Capa de Monte Day, everybody!" And the the uh, people were talking about how they celebrated. Some, but I think somebody said, um, 
you know, I normally don't celebrate, but with the quarantine and everything, it, it was meant ex- it meant extra this year because yeah, uh, he's I by himself. That. Couldn't celebrate with family. Uh, but the incredible thing is last night at probably like eight or nine o'clock, I got an email from a guy named, uh, I believe it's Garad, G-E-R-R-A-D. Ooh, from, get the Batman cereal ready. Well, I don't know. I'm saying I don't know how to pronounce it. It's uh, I believe. Well, Steve he, didn't know how to pronounce Lucia, and he had to. But he confidently Lucia. said he did know how to pronounce. It. <laughs> there's a there's a difference. So I, anyway, he sent me a, a a handful of videos last night, and I think I'll let them speak for themselves. Hey guys, happy Capo de Monte Day from Capo de Monte in Napoli, Italy. We're here listening to a concert at the palace in Capo de Monte. So, to all the Melindas and to Mark and Mark, happy Capo de Monte Day, July 10th, 2020. He called them Mark and Mark instead of John and Johnny, but he apologized. If we're looking at the museum, outside they have some pictures of what's inside the museum. And these are replicas of the tchotchke that are inside. So the museum's full of everything, Caravaggio's, suits of armor, and lots of these porcelain little statues. So apparently that's why Mark and Mark are selling <laughs> replicas of the He's Capo de Monte collection. Uh, I think there's a concert going on inside, even though there is no real Capo de Monte day. But this is the real Capo de Monte. It's where the king and queen used to live in Napoli before it turned into kind of a shithole. All right, that's the update. <laughs> Pretty good. Amazing, oh, he actually lives in Napoli. And, uh, there's yes. a Capo de Monte like palace and museum. And he said, okay, so here's more about Garad. He said, I love your show and I own a hostel in Napoli. I make my employees watch my favorite videos and then go back to their home countries and share them there. So thanks to you guys. Libyans know about Big Zaddy, Daryl Silverthorne, and Little Marky. <laughs> New Zealanders know about the fabulous ones. Yeah. Skateboard surfing is common in Denmark. <laughs> is it legal there? <laughs> I, I, it probably is. That's Anything goes law. there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Dark Lord Blood is well known in France, along with Mike Nastics. Oh, and I, then, I can see Dark Lord Blood doing well in France. Yeah, and then he says, and if any, uh, if you guys ever want to come to Napoli and stay for free, we have plenty of private rooms as well. And he says, sorry, the dog mouth room is no longer available. <laughs> so this guy's a real fan. I mean, I think we mentioned what that we stay in when we're on tour. We stay in rooms that often smell like dogs' mouths because it's all we yeah. can afford. So that one's booked. But, I mean, I, I say we book a trip to Captain Amante as soon as this is all over. On July 10th. Next year, yes. July 10th, 2021. Yeah. And I feel like they were having that concert there to celebrate Capo de Monte Day. Exactly. Kind of That's why they had the concert there. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that update. Um, and Thanks we'll... for the education. Yeah. We never have educational stuff on here. No, we avoid it. Yes, exactly. Now we got some. How about that? <laughs> um, so uh, happy Capo de Monte Day. It's a two-day thing. And... Uh, we, uh, Cafe de Monte Spectacular, I guess, is the two days. The actual day is July 10th. Let's say that. Yeah, actual days. Yeah, okay. All right. We have a special guest on uh, today's uh, Quarantine Classics, Chris Gethard, a previous uh, guest. And we've been guests on his public access uh, show that he did. And, we we uh, can call him a friend of the show. He's a friend yes, of the show. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Chris uh, does a podcast called Beautiful Anonymous that actually just got picked up to be a video podcast. And I, it's a bonkers idea, but it reminds me of kind of like when we just will call a random place like Bazinga or something and see what they're up to. He takes a call, doesn't screen it ahead of time from somebody and talks to that person for a full hour, no matter what. That could be a disaster. I know. And it yeah. gets deep and he's had really people with interesting occupations on. And uh, so he's a, a a fascinating dude and has been on a lot of tv shows that you know so let's bring on chris and and, and he got his start in public access too he did yeah yeah and so i i just i saw him post a picture on instagram recently um of a child a childhood picture of his and i was like oh god he might he might be the plunket master i'm guessing he and so i just emailed him and said you happen to have any unflattering photos of yourself anymore and uh 
a, a few minutes later, I got like a dozen pictures. And uh, oh, nice. so he's going nice. so to gonna join us for Plunkets. Show yep. us your Plunkets. All right, here's Chris Gether. Hey, Chris. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Good well, to have you. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, – well, let's explain what this segment is so that Chris knows well, and everybody knows. Let me ask Chris how he's doing in this whole uh, pandemic thing first. Okay. How, how are you doing in this whole pandemic thing? You know, uh, not great. Okay. Scared all the time, <laughs> but getting by. And uh, I'm, I have a son. He's right there. So he's fun to hang out. You know, a lot of protective feelings towards him, but also yeah. got, to, uh, got to look out for the little guy. So I'm... I, you know, I would say the answer is okay. Okay, good. That's yeah. good. Keeping busy. How are you? Everything? Yeah, we're good. We're just yeah doing this good. Zoom stuff good. constantly. Good. Yeah. I like your workout setup. It's oh, bad. thanks. It's actually not mine. It's my buddy Tom's. I'm in his basement right now. I'm in Wisconsin this week, so. Oh, very nice. This yeah. is such a basement too. I mean, yeah, and he's never used it once. So. I was gonna say, if you somehow have that workout set up in New York, it's uh. I've never seen more space in a New York. Oh, movie. not even close. I don't know what to do with all this space. Yeah, yeah. enjoy it. Whale, going to. whale on the lats. That's what I would say. That's what I'm gonna do. Whale on those lats. Uh, so yes, Sorry, I wasn't. I feel like it just looked like I laughed at my own joke. I was trying to amuse myself. I, went, <laughs> I wasn't laughing at my own joke. I was like, how conceited. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so this, this is a segment we do called Show Us Your Plunkets. Let me just start off with a graphic here. Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett. Jim Plunkett had never known failure until now. And it's time for Show Us Your Plunkets. This, the, uh, the, okay, so this segment, we show terrible photos of ourselves. And we have people uh, send us terrible photos of themselves, too. And it's just a time to celebrate uh, awful photos of ourselves. And uh, we've heard, Chris, that you have some uh, awful photos of yourself. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, when I say I didn't even begin puberty until senior year of high school, that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> really? I was, uh, Is I started my, that? yeah, please do. Okay, okay. I started my senior year of high school, my voice had not changed. And by the end, it had. Um, but I mean, like, junior year of high school, no pubic hair. Freshman I, year of college. St I mean, I didn't shave uh, every day until I was in my mid-20s. So every picture of me as a youth is insane. Can I ask you, what, what's your armpit hair situation like right now? Currently, it's respectable. It's respectable. It? The reason yeah. I ask is because I have, I have zero. Zero. Nothing. I have like three wisps. With a beard like that? I know. I know. My chest hair is fine. I'd be happy Makes to show no it sense. to you if, you if you don't believe me. Sure. I mean, if we're going to talk about it, show, don't tell. That is, that's <laughs> unaltered? That's natural <laughs> state? It's 100%. Both sides. Both sides. Have you ever, has a doctor ever commented on this? No, but I should ask my doctor about it. It's weird, isn't it? Do you think maybe there's something wrong with me? I could see it being a glandular thing for sure. Oh, it probably is it. Huh, I wonder. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't parking? have a degree. Oh. That would be awesome. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a late bloomer myself, Chris, so I identify with your pictures. I don't think, I think I had pubes before junior year, but I, it was like late middle school, early freshman year. Voice, voice changed later than, than most people's and all that. So sure. it makes for some especially awkward uh, photos. I would, I would actually say there's certain photos of mine that I will ask you guys to, I think it would be fun if the first thing we did is if you guys predict my age in yes. certain photos, <laughs> yes. guess my age. Well, let, let's get to, let's, let's, uh, let's set this up first though. We, we do a countdown of all the top three Plunkets. We've been doing this for about 15 weeks now. And uh, here, here's just a quick rundown of the top three Plunkets um, we've had so far. So this first one. This one uh, is of me. I bought that hat ironically, a shithead hat ironically, and then I fell asleep yeah. unironically, and Nick took a picture of me. That's, that's my uh, – but that got usurped by this one. Uh, I forgot her name. Emily. Uh, Emily. Emily, Emily, Emily uh, sent in uh, this huge sweatshirt, a gingerbread house, and just proud as a goddamn peacock right there. And uh, that got usurped by Mike Drucker's picture of him by a garbage oh. can with a harsh shadow. That's Drucker. Yeah, yeah, that's Drucker. You know Drucker. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and when you said it, I said, I can see him in there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, he has some of the best plunkets. We had him on to show his plunkets, like his. You got to make shoes to fill, Chris, is what we're trying to say. (laughs) What I love knowing Drucker is is the uh, him as a child drinking out of a plain styrofoam cup. He's really, really on target based on who he is. I guarantee water is in there. I guarantee it's water. It's nothing fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, no way. That's not Kool-Aid. That's not juice. I said you have big shoes to fill. You have a big satin jacket to fill, I should say. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Uh, all right, so that got usurped a few weeks ago by this one, uh, Grub Child. She, she called herself a Grub Child, which uh, yes. made us laugh. And uh, so she's, uh, she used to be at number three. Then she got usurped by the Star Wars kid who got a picture taken with some Star Wars cutouts, had his mom do it, sent it to us. Definitely a plunket. That heavy got Flash. What's that? Oh, Heavy, heavy flash. flash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That got usurped by this. Uh, this is probably one of our youngest plunkets of all time. This is, uh, this is also a Grub Child attached to Santa and that Josh sent this one in he looks exactly like Kermit in this picture he and Kermit have the exact same expression then that got usurped by Sally's fifth grade boyfriend who did not give us permission to show this photo but Sally sent it to us and we're going to show it anyway uh that got usurped by I think the last time we were on the air a uh, small wonder uh girl who I don't think she knew she wasn't trying to look like small nope. wonder is that correct Nick yeah she just happened correct. to look like small wonder yeah. I was going to say, that's actually just great cosplay. But if it's unintentional, yeah, it's, it is really, really yeah, her, pathetic. She, yeah. she thinks her mom dressed her up like that. So yeah. uh, that got usurped this week by number three, this one of Nick, that Nick didn't even know this was a photo of himself. I it's did. that harsh of a plunk. His eyes kind of red. His nose is at a weird angle, so it looks like it was broken. Your uh, eyebrows are especially see-through here. A lot of pores, a lot of visible pores on that. <laughs> so that's our new number three number 2.5 used to be this one that uh who sent this in i forgot who sent this in but it's his dad here is wearing andrew, a ring. i believe who yeah, did? A- andrew, andrew. yeah yeah he uh his dad is wearing a, a elmer fudge shirt dressed up as rambo <laughs> and it says wambo and he has a fanny pack on and short shorts and uh <laughs> that's andrew in the photo that got usurped by this one this, this is one of the greatest photos of all time. This is a Renaissance festival. That guy's a centaur. And they, this, this woman here sent in the photo. She wanted to get her photo taken with a centaur, but they didn't even include the horse part. So it looks like she got her photo taken with a shirtless dude drinking a beer. Really. Uh, I can see it in the lower corner now yeah, that you mention it. If you look. If you didn't know to look, you'd be like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that got usurped by George's photo last week. Uh, man. This is a great one. This, this is his class picture. This is George's class Second picture. grade. Second grade. Band-Aid mustache. Uh, coming in at number two uh, is the photo I took of Nick at a Red Robin in 2010. This is 10 years ago. I put this up on Nick's Facebook page, and he took it down, and then I put it back up, and then he unfriended me and, and charged me with cyberbullying. So we haven't been friends ever since, but mm-hmm. I've uh, mm-hmm. been milking this photo as much as I can. I, I currently am selling it. I'm licensing it out. People can uh, buy it. I actually licensed it out last week. Uh, it used to a, be Getty Images, but did you buy it out from them outright? They were, the, the cut wasn't enough. They, uh, they weren't giving me enough of a cut, so I took it back. And last okay. week, uh, a, a calendar company actually got in touch with me, paid me $18,000 plus some back-end percentages. Vegans of Red Robin. Oh, wow. 2021, yeah. That's, That's on a, the cover. And then each month, it also has that photo. Oh, well, I, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. They just, this okay. is just on the cover, but I would assume that's what it is. Yeah. Like, it'll be like be... October, and then it'll be that photo. Yeah. Can we actually make this calendar? I, Probably. I, th- you I feel like 15 people might buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, that number two got usurped by Nick Stevens, one of the greatest photos of all time. Like, Ooh. people should be studying Ooh. this. His, that's his brother there, mid sneeze. His dad is smoking in the hotel room, half naked. He kind of looks like Saddam Hussein. His mom is in the bathroom uh, with her bra on getting ready. And they're at, I think, uh, Six Flags? Getting yeah, ready to go I to Six so. Flags. Yeah. Am I allowed so, to comment on these? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Because I would say this, this one just took, uh, this bit just took a turn from funny to a little bit scary to me. Like this, <laughs> if you found this photo on like the floor in the lobby of a hotel, you would assume something really, really bad had happened in the hotel room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what's the scary part, too? The mid-sneeze? 
No, like it looks, it looks like a suffering boy around a man with bad intentions. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Like a kidnap situation going on. Yes. Here. You, know, yeah. you know, I just realized is that he's probably sneezing because his dad is sm- smoking right next to him. I just realized that. He might be allergic to, to the cigarette smoke. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. Anyway, coming in at number one, staying strong, not going anywhere. Steve and his photo with Jim Plunkett, uh, football. Hall of Famer. Nope, never made the Hall of Fame. And uh, that's Steve where he looks exactly like a thumb. So, Not one of my better days. No, but that's what, uh, that's Jim Plunkett there. That's how, that's how we have this name, Chris, is uh, show us your Plunkets because that's Got Jim it. Plunkett. And, okay. Yeah, so that, uh, I, I that's feel, the rundown. Uh, I feel pretty confident in some of the photos that I submitted and being in the conversation on this. There's one that... Um, I regret that I couldn't find a larger version of because there was the one of the people meeting the Star Wars characters. And I, I do yeah. have one of me, sadly, in seventh grade. In the, do you remember Caldor? Did you guys have Caldor? I don't think like so. A, Not in the Midwest. We did in Rhode Island. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. it was like a Northeastern. How would you describe it? Like a super low rent, like. Kmart type place. Right? Yeah. It was like a, yeah. one above Kmart, I think. I think it was significantly below Kmart. Oh, wow. <laughs> but I, I did meet guys, Spider-Man. Guys, guys. I, <laughs> I do have a picture of me meeting Spider-Man in the basement Ooh. of the Caldor. And you can see was it a sanctioned Spider-Man I, or just some guy? It was some guy. And you can see in my eyes that I know I'm too old for it. You can see. I, Are we going to get to see that one? No, I'll try to oh, send it along as an honorable mention. Uh, but yeah. I, I think some of the ones I sent actually might beat that. Yeah, oh, I, yes. I've gotten a preview of some of these, so we'll, we'll get to those. Well, let's start with Steve Lawrence, who uh, is Mr. Plunkett himself. Let's uh, get to your... Well, I'm going a little bit uh, a little bit different this week, you know, um, so I'm going... This is an homage here. What I've always respected about Steve is that he shows Plunkett's from, like, contemporary Plunkett's. Everybody shows a lot of kid, you yeah. know, pictures when they were kids. Oh, he's showing Ooh. one of me. Well, this is contemporary. Like I said, I'm going a little bit different this week. This was from Joe's birthday this past year. And what you you need to know, uh, Chris, is that Joe will often show pictures of myself or of Nick or somebody else. So I decided to do a tribute to Joe this week. So here's picture number one. I was was touting about how I respected the way that you said (laughs) Plunkett's and then you shit on me like that. I thought this one's pretty good. It's mid bite. You weren't sure that I was going to take the photo, and I probably not ready for the photo, and it's blurry and it's framed poorly. People in the background are in perfect focus. (laughs) (laughs) The fact that your shirt is so nice makes your face look even shittier. I know. I got dressed up. It was my birthday. Yeah. Here's another one. This is before one of the shows. I felt like this. (laughs) This I just look. I look large there too. Captured all three of you guys at an opportune moment. I think really I just have a skill as a photographer. I'm mid bite on this one. <laughs> yeah, mid chew, yeah. And then uh, the last one. This is when Joe and I worked together. Uh, is that, is that he, real sleeping? Real sleep. You fell asleep. <laughs> I was walking in and out. I think we were out in on a Saturday. It was a terrible job. We hated everything about it, but Joe fell asleep while working. So God. those those oh, are my pockets for this week. Wow! Oh, and then look at that second chin too. <laughs> See, that's why I'll never go back from the beard. Look at that thing. Yeah. I'm wearing a nice shirt though, so. so and I like that, that going. I like that shotgun spray of tax in the background there too. Yeah. You see those? Like, <laughs> That's how you know it's a terrible job when people are doing that for fun. <laughs> <laughs> kind of arranging tax on a on a wall. <laughs> Good plunk at Steve. I like the different direction. George, do you have anything this week? Uh, I I do. I, I found a hard drive that had. Um, not the greatest of plunkets, but they're okay. This is, I don't know anything about this photo, um, but this has one more chin present than I knew about. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's and, you, George? Yeah. And that's, it's like the, that chin is like the Loch Ness monster. There's, there's one photo of it and it's blurry. Mm-hmm. And otherwise it, and on no your deathbed, you'll it. reveal it's fake. Yes. Um, this is a photo from a film festival where I saw a guy with a great mustache. Mm-hmm. And when I tried to take the photo, I got a second chin. So, um, <laughs> And uh, his name, this guy's name is the Great Mustachio. Google. What does he do? Magician? Uh, no, he is. He has something to do with the New Jersey Film uh, Film Commission or or some commission involved in. I don't want to give the official name that it's the New Jersey Film Commission because it's not that. It's something like that. I'm finding myself confused as to why he's pointing at you. 
Shouldn't you be pointing at his mustache? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's point. why it's a plunket. George, um, can you can you Photoshop that for next? I will. Week's show? I'll have okay. I'll have five fingers pointing toward him by the end of okay. this. Okay. And then yeah. the last one is I've avoided showing uh, like band photos because any guy holding a guitar is a douche. But um, but and some people look good while singing, and I'm not one of them because it always looks like I'm getting a catheter. Yeah. Like that I, I didn't oh, know that, anything about. You're in pain. Yeah. Oh, you're belting but, it out. But there's <laughs> there there's one thing I there's one other thing I have to show, which is that um, two weeks ago we took a break, and that the next day I thought, wow, I'm like no plunkets for two weeks, and the following thing happened. This is no lie. This is very important. I heard. Um, I was walking down the street. I heard xylophone. This is when I was on the way to the cemetery where I go for walks because it's empty, and this happened. And you're crazy. <laughs> a nice. jersey. It was the weirdest thing. I. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But, uh, wow. A little slice of plunket know. life there. Yes. You must have done a double take. You see a plunket jersey? Well, wow. I went toward people during a pandemic. That's how you know how <laughs> surprised I was. I've been living with a, in a giant bubble for four months, and then You're I like approached it. it. It's well, working. yeah, if, if, it, if it cost me my life, I got to show a picture of a plunket. So. Wow, solid plunkets. I'll go next. Um, is that all for That's your plunkets, George? It. Yes. Okay, all right. My plunkets are as follows. Um, all right, this first one, it's just a photo that I just really can't stand of myself. I have a headache, clearly, and somebody just took a photo of me while I'm like, rubbing my temples. And uh, just that, that bit of hair there bothers me. Of course, you got the second chin can't decide on a beard or not a beard and then that little like <laughs> mullet right there that it's just terrible anyway it bothers me um next up is uh this one i don't know i don't know how this photo got taken but it's <laughs> my, my pants unbuttoned Ugh. um which i tend to do after i have a big meal at a restaurant and uh albertina my wife albertina she uh is not a fan of this at all she does not allow for this so maybe i took a photo of that as a joke for her and i sent it to her um, I just say I can. I know that by by just knowing you, I know that you were wearing your "Shit Happens" T-shirt at that. Oh yeah, yeah. Photo <laughs> too. So that, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a celebrity plunk. This is another thing we do, Chris. Is sometimes we show plunkets of ourselves, and the reason that's a plunk is because I hate my hair right here. You see that little flap coming off okay. right there? Mm -hmm. I clearly mm -hmm. didn't wash my hair that day. And then there's the, the widow's peak. You can see that there. Uh, but I want you guys to guess who is the celebrity that I'm with. Uh, Nick, you know who it is. So I don't want to hear. Uh, what do you think, Chris? Who, who, what celebrity do you think this is? He looks vaguely like Joe from Impractical Jokers, but I don't think that's him. It's not him, Steve. I don't know. I don't have a guess yet. George, I want to say it's Max Casella from Doogie Howser. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, no, everybody's wrong. It's Curly from the Three Stooges' grandson. <laughs> of How did I miss that? <laughs> Uh, we, Nick and I went to uh, StoogeCon, uh, what was it, like four, four years ago or so, actually right outside of Philadelphia, yep. where they held StoogeCon at this, uh, in a suburb, at a Marriott, at a convention center, and <laughs> I've never laughed so hard in my life. Just the whole weekend <laughs> was just ridiculous and just... Oh, they had they had a very you know how the hotels have like conference rooms. They had one that they named for this the Shemp Room, and all they did was play Shemp solo movies for the whole weekend. It was all Shemp solo movies in this, and just there was one some men just kind of watching in a dark room. <laughs> there was one room dedicated to the new Three Stooges movie that I think the Fair, Fairley Brothers did. Yeah, remember that one, and they had it on a DVD, and nobody was in there watching it. And the movie ended, and then it just played the DVD menu on a loop for like an hour. And we just sat in there and watched the DVD loop. The, <laughs> this really should have been a This American Life story. I mean, maybe it still can, but our, our time at StoogeCon. And they haven't done it since. I think that they took a loss on that one. So. Yeah. Um, all right, next up is, uh, oh, when I went to get my driver's license photos taken, I just found these photos. I'm trying to be funny here, you know? So it's not a true plunket because I'm trying to be funny, but whatever. I found them, I thought I'd share them. I'm at a DMV, I'm getting my photo taken. I decided to dress up as a goth. And so I put white face makeup and everything and waited in line. I got to the line and the woman told me that I couldn't have white face makeup. So I had to go into the bathroom and wash it all off. And uh, I, I got most of it off. And then I went back out and they were like, okay, that's fine. 
Uh, the, the key is go, f go at Friday right around closing time because they just want to get you out as fast as possible. So I uh, ended up getting my photo, a driver's license photo taken. And you can kind of see some like splotches of white. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think this is the last. Oh, this no, this is the second to last one. This is my grandma. This is not a plunket of my grandma, but it's the way the, the photo was framed. Um, I, saw, I found this in a shoebox at my parents' house. Look at, look at the way they framed this photo. <laughs> tennis balls and ripple chips that's the part i don't get like that stack of tennis balls right there that almost yeah. disturbs me more than the ripple chips the two boxes of ripple chips <laughs> but, Box. remember when chips were in boxes yeah, wow. yeah exactly yeah more packaging that's what oh that's good yeah that's, <laughs> that's uh, good. So the last one is of nick and his dad we were at the premiere of our documentary dirty country and just nick just doing those just like the eyes of a serial killer. Look at that. Red and just thinking about murder. Like what's behind those eyes? Nobody knows. He doesn't even know. So those are my plunkets. Okay, snuck one of me in there, I see. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me do let me go and then we'll show Chris Chris's. Um all right, and I, I we have a bunch sent in from people because we were off for two weeks. So uh where are the pictures? Hang on. Oh, of course. Let me start off with uh, these first. Someone sent this in. This is from a video we played called Little Marky, and they noticed that the guy in the background wearing the offensive hat looks like a thumb. Oh, he so does. So it's kind of like thumb -like. Steve's thumb uh, picture. Oh, it is thumb-like. Yeah. Somebody just sent this in this morning. <laughs> this is an illustrator who illustrated the entire VCR party cast. <laughs> and got, all of these teeth. are... These are the most grotesque, like, <laughs> Gerald Scarf caricatures. I had to look twice at my face, because look at my eyeballs are tiny at the top. Yeah. And, and I look I, like a Skeksy. And, uh, what's a Skeksy? From uh, the Dark Crystal. Uh, just, a, oh. a, you know, those grotesque bird-like creatures. <laughs> and then Steve's wearing a hat that says thumb instead of your NYC pizza hat. And George... I don't know. Well, it's kind that's of like a every every one of my features is exactly. That's how I see myself. So that's perfect. <laughs> All right. So let me get into uh, this. Is not terribly inspiring, but you notice I have red eyes, and uh, this Yoda shirt had just come out of the underoos package, so it still has the the shape of the record package those used to come in. Um, and I'm doing something weird with my hand there. Um, Go ahead yeah, see, that's, but see, that's a plunk disguised as a cute picture. You're just trying to show off that you're cute. I, no, I'm not trying to show that off. <laughs> it, trust me, you'll know it when I'm trying to show off that I'm cute. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I put this one in. I don't see anything weird about it. I think this must have just snuck in. I think that's fine. Going now on, we're talking. Going now on a tubing talking. trip in uh, Apple River, Wisconsin. I hope we'll get flagged for this. <laughs> yeah, me too. The, the thing I remember about this trip is my parents took us tubing, like down down a, a river, and they just thought it'd be a fun family thing. No, it turns out this is like Lake Havasu Party Central. People with renting tubes just for their beer coolers. Oh, people public were urination. Public, yeah, public urination. urination. People flashing people. And that was the last time as a family we went tubing. No, I, my, my family went tubing one time, and my brother had a story about how he went to publicly urinate. He was probably like, 11 or 12 or so he went to publicly urinate behind some bushes and he saw a guy performing cunnilingus on a woman back there when he was really young and he didn't know if he should tell my dad or not <laughs> and he decided not to he just told it when he was an adult so somebody was actually doing that there while he was publicly publicly urinating yeah so. Look, i had a question the, about yeah. your hat were you swimming with a hat on yeah i always wore a hat uh even when yeah. you were swimming yeah yeah well God. i mean just yeah. a fucking weird kid. That was my parents went to Hawaii and they got me one of those little bike hats. So I always loved wearing those. Uh, the last one, my sister just posted this and we just, my whole family looks miserable. At first I thought my dad wasn't that unflattering. First of all, this is an early attempt at uh, growing a beard. I wasn't like shaving. That's just how it grew. No mustache would grow in for many years. Sister looks miserable. Mom's sweater, <laughs> sweatshirt's too big. And we're on a too small love seat so i thought my dad looked okay but then look where his hand his hand is doing a weird thing because he's kind of like being forced over by the edges of the couch so yeah and their hands are um, behind your head are just kind of like in a weird like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was not very well thought out or if, if and that, we're talking hands can i ask you to zoom in on your mother's hand perhaps touching your hand <laughs> it's oh yeah it's like 
Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's weird. It's it's that's like what uh, immediately jumps out to me. Wow. Yeah, that is weird. I didn't notice that detail, but yeah, it's a rare four what? for four. <laughs> All right, let's get to Chris's Plunkets here. And you know what? I respect the hell out of you, Nick, for, for showing an adult Plunket. Finally. Finally. Yeah, I've Thank shown you. some before, but yeah. Okay, so this is what uh, caught my eye. We got a little... This is little... What, I think this is what made you reach out to me for this bit. Yes, it was, because I thought, oh, you're the littlest PI. Um, <laughs> but uh, what... So we, we want to guess what grade this was or what age? I mean, the caption gives it away a bit. Oh, you... right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> But we could guess what year. Yeah, get, you can guess. That is an official high school year photo. I was way off, so I would have definitely went seventh grade. So I was going to say eighth grade, but I'll, I'll go with uh, I'll go with uh, I'm, tenth grade. I'll say freshman, ninth grade, George. Yeah, tenth grade, and I would. This it can't be nineteen eighty seven, but I thought this might be a tie into the movie Young Sherlock Holmes. But <laughs> I think this that would have been this must have been years later. This Chris? is the photo. This is the photo that was on my senior year high school ID. No. Whoa. Uh, really? <laughs> so this was taken at the very beginning of my senior year of high school. Wow. Holy oh, cow. Man. And was was the grandfather hat sort of your trademark or was that just uh No, they I re, I remember very distinctly that uh they had said we're taking pictures for your IDs and this was a pretty new thing at my school. I don't it was either the first or second year and they said uh feel free to uh make them fun with with uh funny outfits or props like they were trying to let us get to fun <laughs> and it. these were all clothes i owned I, I i i will say i i was really into hats so i would wear that hat sometimes and i did wear the sweater vest unironically but i did know it was funny to combine them <laughs> yes well <laughs> yeah, did, you, sure. did you have a deep voice at this point no oh, no i i'm i'm telling you my voice did not change until a so I mean, I, I think it was probably not until about January of my senior year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is what okay. I looked like. That's this a recipe what for, I looked com like for comedy year. right there. Uh, do, you remember, um, do you remember Wormser from uh, Revenge of the Nerds? I do. I do. <laughs> I'm getting some, uh, some Wormser vibes here. I think that's very fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, I tried to go in chronological order, logical order, but maybe I'm wrong here. Okay. This, uh, again, a lot of uh, space on either side of you in the framing here. What framing spit? Oh, okay. I'm gonna say you look a little, I, I'm gonna say you look a little older here. I'm gonna say this is, uh, well, I'll say after senior year at like you know the summer before college kind of thing. I'll, I'll just go 10th grade again, 11th grade prom. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, George, 11th grade prom. You guys know that that is my junior year prom. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, this, I have to say, when we were cycling through the other pictures, I really felt pride that I had submitted this one because <laughs> the framing's bad. It's yeah. clearly not being held at a, an angle fully. Like, <laughs> it should be so easy to take a horizontal angle photo when you have a floorboard running and a <laughs> mental piece. Your feet are cut off. I like the, the empty basket in front of the fireplace yes. there. I also would personally give a shout out to the, uh, the old Mexican blanket on an armchair. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. And I think I'm going to go ahead and say too, like the idea that this is what I did for my junior prom, the idea that I was into taking a photo without my date to show off, <laughs> lets you know like I was that kid, the top hat and cane kid at the junior prom. I wow. thought, very cool and very funny. I love you know it. The, was the blanket, was it covering up a stain? No, it was just my family's chosen choice of decor. <laughs> okay. All right. Great question, though, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it also looks like at an angle. Okay. All right, we'll move on. <laughs> Wild I, I man. I spent a lot of time on that. <laughs> I'm going to say you look maybe slightly younger here. I'm going to go, I'll go, well, I'm going to say same year. I'm going to say junior year high school. I'm going eighth grade. Mm. No, I'm so perplexed. Yeah. Um, I'll go sophomore year. 17 years old. Wow. So this is a uh, junior senior year right here. Yeah. I, I don't remember where the wild man sign was, or is that a sign that's hanging? I think it's hanging. I think it's oh, one think of those stickers. Saying stickers. I think you're actually saying it. <laughs> and I just it recorded that in the camera. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly where this was. Um, I believe. I believe my high school girlfriend 
sent this to me at one point. That's my dad's shirt. I stole that shirt from my dad. I still have it. I thought it looked really cool, but I didn't factor in that my dad is six foot two, 220 pounds. <laughs> that was probably five foot three and a buck 20. In this picture. Uh, quite the wild man there. Uh, yeah, this one I'm oh. thrilled about. Oh, uh, man, I love this one. Now, this one, I'm going eighth grade for sure. Uh, oh, the I'll, Optimus I'll, Prime. I'm going to say this is your senior picture. It, this is, yes, this is my senior yearbook photo, end quote. Wow. Good God. All we need wow. now is a little Energon and a lot of luck, Optimus Prime. It's a <laughs> motivational <laughs> and inspiration to everyone. Yeah, I'll tell you, too. The teacher who ran the yearbook, I had him in a couple classes, and he was your definitive teacher who, it's funny, my mom knew him in high school. They went to high school together. And my mom was like, oh, he was like always so into being like the coolest kid. And he was one of those teachers who wanted to be like the cool, like the big man on campus teacher. And he called me into his uh, classroom after hours one day, and he said, we got your quote. He ran the yearbook. He said, we got your quote. I want you to change it. And I said, no, I really believe in what Optimus Prime had to say. And he said, you know, this is what people, there will be times where people go through their yearbook and they'll say, wait, who was that? And that's what they'll think of you. Is this book? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I, am, I, com I completely understand what a yearbook quote is for. I picked one that I like and I'm sticking with it, man. See, I, thought that, I thought that you went to like maybe a, like a hippie school when you said that you uh, got to do fun photos for your IDs. I thought maybe like, oh, they do fun stuff. That surprises me that this is the same school. Yeah, no, I, I went to a public school that actually, I, I would say uh, there was a surprising amount. Of, it was a surprisingly tough school. There was some violence you had to put up with. You really had to kind of fight to survive. And did, and, the, did the puberty not help things? Or did, were, were you, oh, I was. Or the lack I thereof? Was, Every day was just praying to get in and out. And uh, I think part of why I've always been like, uh, I think it actually served my entertainment career well, though, because I was always in such a panic to achieve anything that would give me any sort of status, you know, like anything. So I was always joining every club and, and the school play. And I think part of why I became a, a motivated individual because I was, it's because I was so terrified every day in high school. So I felt like I needed to do something so that yes. I get eaten alive. It's, it's that Johnny Cash song, Boy Named Sue. You know? bit, bit. But <laughs> I'm, prou I'm, proud that, um, I'm proud that I went with the Optimus Prime quote and that I stuck to my guns. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And it's a quote you still live by today. So I think it held it up. It is. And, and, and uh, Optimus Prime spoke at the graduation too, right? At your graduation. <laughs> he, did, year, he, did, so. yeah, yeah. he did, yeah. He talked about... Uh, <laughs> A lot about how we have to find our own energon cubes now. We can't depend on our parents. <laughs> and that the, it's up to all of us to find our own matrix of power within. Oh, moving. And he turned into a semi and you never saw him again. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. All right. Uh, I think there's one more. Let's see. Hang on. Oh, I think I need to zoom you out a little bit. Yeah, this one is uh, another from, from the people who brought you the uh, prom photo. This is the also at a tilt. Yeah, here. I yeah. Mean, this one's getting me dizzy. <laughs> this was wonderful. This is wow. This is a real Plunkett. And I also like uh, yeah. This is true Plunkett. I really like uh, oh, the yeah. low res too. I'll say eighth grade here. This is no, college. I'm, yeah, I was just I was gonna say I'm this going is freshman year of college. This is my <laughs> freshman year of college. I'm wearing a very ill-fitting Weezer shirt. Uh, my friend Mike took this. It's one of the only pictures of me from then. Oh, sorry. This is, oh, yeah, that, that next one I'm really mortified by. Yeah, that's my friends Neelam and Marlene, who I'm still vaguely in touch with. But yeah, right before my freshman year of college, I got food poisoning. So when I showed up, that's what I looked like. Oh, wow. I, was, I, had, I had lost like 15 pounds the summer before freshman year. All your clothes just kind of draped on you? Oh, just that Weezer shirt that I stole from my brother, that awful mauve hoodie. <laughs> my stupid glasses, my giant forehead. There's like... <laughs> Nothing. There's nothing. I when I look at this photo, there's nothing about it that I like. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, like you look, I, I think you look really confident here. Like you're just walking in, and you're just like maybe you're like my voice is deep now. Like, but it's unearned. It's such clearly unearned <laughs> confidence. <laughs> well, okay. Here's the one you're mortified by. 
this, this is the last one, is, one. This one is bad. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say, you know, like junior year of college here. This, this looks like college. I'm yes. thinking last March. This, <laughs> this was actually, uh, this was uh, New Year's Eve Y2K. So this was oh. New Year's Eve 99 going into 2000, which would have meant I was a sophomore in college. Okay. You can notice I'm uh, soaking wet. I was just about to ask. If you point that out. That's my brother with his, his arm kind of wrapped around me. And uh, uh, I will tell you, I have not, I gave up drinking in 2001. And this is the cusp of the year 2000. And I think it's very illustrative. This photo <laughs> explains why I stopped drinking. And if you can zoom out, so here's another fun fact that I think adds to the punket nature of this. The, the girl that I'm holding was my girlfriend. We got together senior year of high school. We went to the same college. So this is end of sophomore year of college. And I think you can see that this other kid we went to high school with is, if you had to guess who her longtime boyfriend was, <laughs> You wouldn't guess me. You'd guess the guy with the Blink-182 vibe in a heart. Oh, yeah. Another guy with the soaking wet shirt. I'm soaking wet. Soaking <laughs> wet. So drunk. I had, Earlier that night, I stood in a sink and poured a bottle of champagne over myself and then fell down. That's how you know you have a problem. It's <laughs> not good. This is. You can see, sometimes people ask me why I don't drink, and this picture tells you everything about what it was like when I got drunk. It was, was, it, uh, was it a college thing? Were you drinking in high school too? Or was it, as soon as you got to college, you're just... My tail end of senior year, I went zero to 60. I went from never having had a drink to going so hard. I remember one of the first times I got drunk. I got drunk with some kids who I was like friends with, but not the tightest. And they had a 30 pack and I just had something to prove. And they called my buddy Pete to come get me because they knew he and I were real close. And he was a guy who I was hanging out with literally five nights a week at that point with. And he showed up and said, where, where is he? And they pointed at my passed out body and said, he's right there. And they, he said, that's not Chris. That's how much I would drink that I physically, he could not recognize me. That's how obliterated I got. You would shape shift. Like I, I was instant. I, I had never tried alcohol. And then I was an instant alcoholic looking back on it. Just, oh yeah, wow. I come from a family of alcoholics. And I drink to the point where I'm physically unrecognizable in high school. And then, yeah, this was, this was, you just see the combination of sadness and anger in my eyes, <laughs> oh, yes. the glasses sliding down in a way that I hate, the overexposed <laughs> forehead, my brother, who's also soaking wet and not, not a good look <laughs> on his end. And then a, a late nineties, early two thousand skater kid who's a friend of my name, Matt, but who's clearly running game on my girlfriend right you're being cuckolded right in this photo 100 percent cuck pure <laughs> cuck vibes soaking wow. wet drunk little cuck These are, <laughs> and i think just have this on your phone anytime somebody asks you why you don't drink you just kind of show them this and they're like ah okay it's it's a real it's a real story <laughs> it, you know a picture tell i'm thinking about words. i'm thinking about quitting drinking after having seen this photo <laughs> Ooh, ooh, it's yeah. not good. ooh it's not good <laughs> well let's get i'm soaking good. wet right now <laughs> well, let's get into some plunkets we've been off for a couple of weeks so i got a bunch to get through from people who sent them in uh this one is from uh karina she said that is a there's she by the way isn't this she's the one holding the cd so i don't even know who the girl is who's not holding the CD, but... That's a great facial expression, though. Yeah, and she wrote a little something with this. She said uh, she had a cowlick, a shirt five sizes too big, eyes closed with an Ace of Base CD insert, and uh, she's mid-Oreo dissection. Um, <laughs> oh, that is an Oreo. Okay, That yeah. is an Oreo, nice. yep. Um, nice. Okay, and next up is... Oh, this is Camden's wife who uh, gave permission. This is at Multnomah Falls in, in Portland. Beautiful. And then the contrast, he said, between the beauty and his wife's expression was uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, this one was sent in on Instagram by Dingo Dingo Christensen. Um, she said she doesn't know what... This wasn't Halloween. This is just a costume she made of a stuffed animal vendor. And anytime Alf is in a plunket, I'm going to... Oh, so. the Alf vibe. The Alf yeah. thing... I, here's what I, I would say, if I may, is you might look at the girl with the box on her head and say, this plunket is of her. I would actually argue that he is the plunket in this situation. 
Really? Interesting. You the know, way he's touching yeah. the elf, like it really is bringing him so much. And then I would point out if we look at the length of his pants. I was going to just zoom in on I that. I was just going to say that too. Yeah. yeah. Right, right as you mentioned that, I was like, yeah, there it is. Yep. How could you sleep with cuffs around like that? Like, it just doesn't seem like a comfortable way to, uh, to sleep if that's your pajamas. Um, so, excellent punket from uh, Dingo Dingo Christensen. Uh, this is Gretchen. Um, oh. Bad clown face. It oh. looks, looks like a state fair. Uh, a, maybe also, a local fair, county fair. It's also a monochromatic clown. Yeah. You know, aren't they supposed to have multiple colors on their face? It's just like they went with light green. Kind of a half assed clown, yeah. Um, oh, and this is Gretchen's dog. She's, we oh. do accept pet plunkets. So, yep. yeah. And that, a male dog, right? Uh, yep. Looks so. like it to me. Yep. Okay. okay. This one tells a story. This is Kayla. And she said she want, and she said this is pre plunket. She had an idea to make her hair. She really wanted to do a self hairstyle. And she wanted to make it look like Shannon Sossaman. Do you know who this is? Just a model, I guess. And no she, idea, but so she yeah. tried to do her hair like this, and this is how it turned out. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mila, uh, hope that grows out. <laughs> She's put on a brave face there. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, yeah. similar. <laughs> so, so, she, yeah. she came close. It, it yeah. is close, actually. Well, yeah. It seems like it just has to be messy, right? I mean, that's I the, think that's the, the different thing. lengths. Yeah. Um, okay, this is Matt from England Cinematic. He he's sent us numerous plunkets. I his hair is very. Um, Bulletproof here, yep. Yeah, and uh, I don't know what's on his, um, but it looks like also the couple behind him. I don't know if you can make that out. They're in a serious kind of like free makeup conversation, uh -huh. and he's taking a selfie. Yeah, harsh flash too. Harsh so, flash, out of focus. Love yep. it. Two plunkets here. Um, this is uh, Vinny. Vinny is on the left here, and in, in, on the top photo, on the bottom photo, is given a, sort of a Magnum PI look. This is a oh, yeah. later one of Vinny. He said this was also not Halloween, it was, and, but he was dressed as a monk, and he can't remember why. Um, Going through a phase? Yeah, maybe. And weird framing, too. Um, yeah, I, I like to look at the people's backgrounds. Uh, yeah, we got there's anything. a George O'Keefe, Steve? Oh, it just looked almost like that the photo frames were facing backwards, but I guess no. It's just oh, the no. Angle. <laughs> that would have been weird. We played a video about how to make masks, <laughs> how to make people, how to make masks. And so we, and they, they had like a bunch of the Chewbacca ones. And uh, so Wade sent in him wearing that Chewbacca mask that was in the intro to a VHS clip we played. <laughs> and, uh, that, was the shirt, that, that was the shirt that Chewbacca wore in all the Star Wars too, right? Say with Darth Vader, he wore a yellow cape with his face on it, yeah. <laughs> I did just remember that used to be a thing at Halloween though, right? Like yeah. the plastic shirt with the full image of the thing you're trying to be. <laughs> So Just if there's any mistake clear. of who you were, yeah. Star Wars on the shoulder. Yep. <laughs> we haven't even mentioned that the adult in the background walked in at an unfortunate time where it's perfect genital to child <laughs> head height. Yeah, and it looks yeah, like so maybe a pack of cigarettes or in the front pocket. or. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, a definitely not a cell phone. Uh, um, and then also like that gate so that maybe dogs or maybe the, the Star Wars characters can't get through there. Right. Yeah, it was for them, yeah. yeah. For Chewie and Darth. Uh, oh, yeah. some celebrity plunkets. This is Don Sparrow, who just saw um, Winnie Cooper, Danica uh, from The Wonder Years, at a Nordstrom and took a picture with her, and he hates his expression. <laughs> she seems like a good sport. And so, Nick, you just have first name basis with her? You just call her Danica? Well, because I don't know her last name. <laughs> I, I tell her? I, yeah, I think you're right. I didn't want to risk having to. Yeah, I don't. Fun. I'm not risking. It. I take it back. Okay, great story here from. Oh, this is um, bad. Yeah, so Wayne is, is a big Olympics fan, and she said whenever she would go meet some of these people in person, she would get her hair done, get her makeup done, and then never took a flattering photo. So there's a collection of three here. Here's Sean White at a 7-Eleven promoting Stride gum, mm -hmm. and I think she's holding her pack of Stride. <laughs> she is. She mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. is. This is Wayne with yeah. Ryan Lochte, who I don't know he was, what he's promoting. Sort of a disgraced oh, on? Olympian. It was for some e-show called What Would Ryan Lochte Do? And 
she said she was a big fan. He just kind of said, thanks. He said, she said, he only said one word to her the entire time. He's supposed to be the kooky one. Like he's kind of, he's a goofy and quirky guy, right? Not, no, not in person, I guess. Oh. And then I have to read this last one because there's a story. It's with Joe Manganiello from uh, the new Pee Wee Herman movie on Netflix and oh, oh, Magic Mike, what, what we know him for. So Wayne said that, um, oh, True Blood also. This is a book signing in 2013. Um, she's a huge fan, heard the signing was happening. The store owner promised that everyone would get a posed photo with Joe. Um, and she got her hair done and her nails for the book signing. When uh, everyone, when entering the store, we were told on the spot that he wasn't gonna do posed photos, but instead the bookstore owner would take pictures while he was signing uh, when it was your turn. Um, and they're basically, the celebrities are looking at the camera, they're looking down signing. But when it was her turn, she handed her photo to the owner. I had a crappy Samsung Galaxy One phone where the camera was slow. By the end, Joe was done signing my book. The owner wasn't able to take the photo in time and told me he'd do it during the next person's signing. And so <laughs> while I'm standing there like an idiot, he shouts, look. And as you can tell, everyone in the photo looked up I've been embarrassed of the photo for years since he looked upset and pissed. It does not help that there's a random blonde lady in the middle smiling as if it was her photo. <laughs> this is gold. And, uh, oh, man. Oh, so I think that new, might usurp a top. Uh, we got a new 2.5. I think that week. might, yeah. Really we got a new 2.5. That might usurp. So uh, that is Show Us Your Plunkets. Chris, thank you for joining us. Uh, what a and, joy. What a pleasure. That was so fun. I enjoyed oh. your commentary as well, so we'll have to have you back. I think um, you're gonna. I think you're gonna usurp next week too. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see where it falls. But I have a feeling you're gonna usurp. I have. I actually have some photos that if I can dig them up, I may just submit them outside of being sure. a guest. I may just want to get into the random pool. <laughs> Although that last one with the werewolf guy from True Blood is really joyous really yeah joyous. it's so good I, and uh i just read the beautiful anonymous we talked about that uh, up front but um it's gonna be a video uh series now as well what's happening yeah there's this company called topic that does a lot of stuff on their platform um and they want to turn my I, i'm very fascinated to know like they want to turn my podcast which is based on phone calls and audio medium into a video medium where there's going to be a lot of animation and stuff so oh animation yeah okay, i was gonna say gonna like how would you see the, would you be able to see the person but yeah if it's animated that'd be awesome actually. yeah i'm just gonna do exactly what i've been doing for years and then they're gonna animate the stories and i think it it's gonna at the very least i think it'll be a cool experiment yeah i'm excited about that and of course yeah. you can listen to the podcast now you're still doing new ones every week and yeah yeah i'm really proud of it really proud of it that's a it's, cool show it's fascinating and it's, it's risky and yeah i mean it's it's amazing so love it yeah some of them are really serious and then you sometimes just get an hour conversation with a guy who like has shit his pants 10 times and wants to tell you about it so it goes in every every direction you could want that's, i'd like yeah. to see that animated uh-huh uh -huh. me too <laughs> me too well chris thanks uh, for coming on again hang in there and i hope your your son is fed at this point yeah, he's doing pretty good. His his mom came and uh, and is feeding him like a responsible adult instead of looking at uh, bad pictures of strangers <laughs> in Chewbacca masks. Well, we appreciate you neglecting your fatherly duties to join us for that. For you always. Thank You're you, the Chris. best, Chris. Thanks. All right. Good talking See you later. To Hang in there, everybody. All right, guys. We uh, have more to cover. What do we do have? We? What do we I have? I haven't even looked at the... Uh... I think, um, oh, we're, we have part two of our toe tapping tournament coming up. Oh, and yeah. Joe, you scouted a recruit. We're doing kind of blue chips here where you can bring up a young up and comer and kind of be the Burgess Meredith and Rocky and train. Well, I, think, I think that's how we, ha how we should do it now. I feel like maybe that first championship, you know, it's like Super Bowl one. You know, there were only like, what, six teams in the NFL. Super Bowl one's way different than the Super Bowl now. So I feel like now we can kind of change the rules a little bit. Um, here's my idea. I think that we all that we will do a draft next week. That we'll all get to choose. We can bring in some rookies, some some fresh faces, some uh, toe tappers that you've never heard before. We can also take losing toe tappers from the first tournament. You can't take any of the winners. 
the ones that lost in the first round, you can take those. So I think Wet Pets is probably still available. I think Dr. Tammy Bailey's still available. Uh, so uh, I think we'll go through and we'll each get to select our number one pick. Um, Interesting. Okay. You know what I mean? And then, so, uh, and then by the end, we'll have 16 different, different toe tappers and we'll start a new tournament the following week. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I, I had a recruit that I was sort of grooming. I want to show you, and you tell me if you think this counts. Okay. I just thought of this. I actually woke up this morning with this song in my head, and I thought maybe this would make a good toe tapper. It, I, and it comes from a, a movie we found called Royal Face-Off, oh. which was by a coin. I think I, what we've gathered is a guy who collected coins, was a coin enthusiast, um, decided to make his own movie where his cause was he didn't want the queen's face and president's faces to be on currency. It should be more contemporary heroes. So he makes a little girl protagonist start of a blog and it takes off overnight. Even people in England fly her out there to meet with the queen and they have a, a rally about it's getting the, the weirdest queen, fucking movie the queen off her money. And so I, we've played the credits before, but this is a song during the rally, and I included a little bit of lead up, and then you'll hear I know. the song. Excellent call on this one, Nick. We never expected you know, such an outpour of emotions from the people in the countries who the Queen's face dominates their money. Yes, but Abdicate the face, let a hero take her place. That's not so, the one I was thinking you were going to do. Really? I thought you were going to do the closing credits of Face No, Off. no, we've played that before. This has to be a new recruit. So well, we, we haven't played it in the tournament. No, it hasn't been in the tournament. So maybe Abdicate the Face, Put a Hero in His Place will go up against the end credits song. But you you oh, realize I, that's Yellow Submarine, right? We, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also that this was shot in Florida, and they had people who clearly aren't British saying, right, right on, or whatever he says, <laughs> in like the worst fake Cockney accent. Um, what year thought, would that have been? Later than you think, like 2006 or so. Oh, so Diana was dead by that. Princess Diana yeah, was yeah. dead. And, yeah, yeah, she definitely outrageous. was. And then, uh, uh, Nick, did you say that we found that at a gas station? No, I don't think I said it was find? at a gas station. No. Yeah, that was a gas station find. I remember, I remember it was a Flying J in the DVD section. Somehow this movie got distribution. So. Well, I'll just play the, the part of the guy from the crowd, the, the British man here in jolly old sunny Florida. Dominates their money. Yeah, spot on. Abdicate the face, yeah, let a hero oh, take her face. On. <laughs> I would like... About what? Uh, <laughs> what did he say? Uh, about what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He says, "Yes, yeah, spot on." Yeah, spot on. That's the yeah. That's what British people say. Well, I found this uh, toe tapper. I don't know if I'm going to select it uh, as a uh, as one of my recruits, but uh, I listened to it. And I've been singing it all day today. Uh, here it is. It's for a supermarket in I think St. Louis, maybe. Center now, center supermarket. Oh, she frozen up. Yeah, it froze up for us. Hold on a second. I mean, that's what that, you know who won the toe tapping tournament uh, was uh, Springer. Springer Mountain Chicken. And that seems very Springer Mountain Chicken to me. Uh, yeah, not so, quite. It doesn't have a gospel choir behind it, but it's still pretty inspirational. I yeah. think it could be an Otis. So I think that that one has a, a strong chance. I'm not saying I'm, I'm picking it. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll find out next week. We'll each have four in our, and we're not going to do the, the sides too. We're not going to do jingles versus VHS. It's just all toe tappers on both sides. Okay, that's next week. 
Um, you know, I, I realized we didn't play Which Thumb is Steve. I have that sitting on my desk. I want to play that with Chris, too. Oh, shoot. Do you guys want to play? Yeah. Okay. Well, well while, while we're talking about tournaments, you get that queued up. But did we have any uh, reports from the Melendiverse? Tournaments? Yes. What are tournaments? Well, I'll Toe tapping I'll tournament. You. And uh, not only that, the Melendiverse had their own. Sally uh, put together her own bracket. And let me show you guys what happened there. So this is the so, Facebook group that talks about the show, and they made their own. So they were unhappy with the results, correct? They were very, yeah. Some people were, uh, <laughs> but I think uh, the majority. What is the forty-one and thirty-seven? That's how many votes they got. Forty-one <laughs> votes for Wet Pat, thirty-seven for Doctor Tammy Bailey. Oh, that's a that's a battle. Yep. Credit clown Springer Chicken goes out in the first round to credit. What? Clown, but that's 50, that's a spite. That's a spite vote there. They, they're they're, they have, they're making a statement. Atlas Butler, uh, Harkness. So Atlas Over Butler. Over Harkness, on. that yep. harshly. Uh, your Johnson, another first round loss. Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. What? Yeah, yep. I, that one I respect. I respect that one a lot. So I, yeah, I well, let's go that. over to the other side. I'll just quickly go through these. Okay. Uh, skateboard surfing goes on over Mrs. T mother. Kosher, kosher, kosher beats hairdresser. Kathy don't go going over super duper pooper. Completely Ooh. different than ours. I don't know about that. Huh. Totally tulip to ram it. Totally tulip beats Kathy don't go. Kosher, kosher, kosher uh, beats hairdresser. Skateboard surfing beats. Uh, I don't know where this is going to go. I'm nervous. I, I don't know either. So skate, the finals is skateboard surfing against who? No, it's Wet Pets uh, lost to Midwest Hemorrhoid. So it's Midwest Hemorrhoid versus Totally Tulip. Totally Tulip won. Wow. So you, you the bracket. I know you do a great job. Totally and Tulip won up against Midwest Hemorrhoid? Yes, in the yep. finals. Oh, wow. That's yep. interesting. interesting one. Two tight 75 to 17. Yeah, it, it was lopsided. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't oh, know. Winner, winner Totally Tulip. I mean, this is, this is what I expected our tournament to actually look like. You well, know, having like, having the two. guest having the guest judge is is a uh, is the wild card because they're the exactly. ultimate arbiter. Well, it was what? Ramit beating totally tulip. That was a surprise uh, there. But look at here, eighty six to five. I think that was the probably was, the biggest. That's the most lopsided. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what do you think? Should we have like maybe Melinda's come on as the judges? But I feel like they already have opinions going into it. I feel like they I want a fresh opinions. face to hear it for the first time. But maybe uh -huh. we make it more democratic. Maybe it's a vote. Uh, instead of just having them be the ultimate decider. No, but we need it. We need it now. You know what I mean? We're not doing this live. So no, I'm saying all now. all of us would would vote. Like, oh, five of the five people who are on for that so particular. For example, bracket. totally Tulip would have won because it would have been three against two. You know how we voted? It would versus yeah. Ram it. They wouldn't be able to discount that. It would be up to the. No, but we're all competing against each other. I'm always going to vote for my own. <laughs> well, in the way that you've set up the tournament, I guess. But we could just have them randomly assigned and then, you know. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have to discuss this. We'll have to, yeah. Melinda's, <laughs> if you have ideas for how we should do this, say it in the uh, message boards down below. So I don't think there's a better way to do the brackets, though, physically than the way you did it. Um, with the lines on the uh, preview. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There I'll, I'll do it again. Way. Yeah, I, that's one thing I'm not going to change about. Yeah. The Very professional. That's going to yeah. stay the same. All right, so uh, let's play. A, let's play the game show. Okay, so um, let's just get this opening graphic going. Here we go. All right, it's everybody's favorite game. Which thumb is Steve? This is the game where I'm going to show you two photos of thumbs. One of those photos, one of those thumbs, is Steve. The other one is just a thumb. You guys understand how to play? Mm -hmm. I wish Chris was here. I was excited for Chris to play which thumb is Steve. Um, all right, here's, for, here's your first thumb. Okay. All right, take a good look. It's got a lanyard on, got a Carl Strauss head on. Yeah, but most thumbs do these days. What, have a lanyard and a yes. Carl Strauss? The yeah. ones we've been looking at lately. Okay, soak it in. All right, here's your next thumb. Okay, it is. Mm. See what also, I'm saying? The same picture. Oh, yes, exactly. Also has a Carl Strauss hat. Now, Joe, uh, I thought in this game you're supposed to have different photos for yeah, us to choose. I think well, you might have the asked. Thing. They are different photos. Really? Yeah, they are different photos. Yeah. Hmm. So one of those is a thumb. The other one, well, both of them are thumbs. But one of those thumbs is Steve. Okay. Okay. That, uh, Nick, what do you think? Uh, I remember the photo of, of the thumb Steve being a Dreamstime property. 
that we didn't pay to unwatermark. So I'm going to go with the one on the left. Okay. George? Uh, I'm going to go with the one on the right because I don't see Jim Plunkett's shoulder in that one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. He could have been standing off to the side in that one. but um, Maybe yeah. he took the photo. He was. It could have been. Yeah. Can I get a photo of you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve, which thumb is you? Uh, this one they did give a, a hint to. Definitely on the right because Carl Strauss is spelled with two S's, not one. Aha! <laughs> that's the giveaway. It's like doing a word search. Good eye, and you're correct. That is the correct thumb, and that's how you play. Yeah, maybe just What's send. Maybe just send it to, to Chris and just have him get back to you on what he thinks. Just, with no explanation, I'll just uh, yep. send him an email from me, no subject. Yep. Uh, I'll just do regarding colon and then nothing. Yep. And then just... <laughs> and he'll just reply left. <laughs> and we'll, we'll report those results next week. Yep. Uh, we have a, a special VCR party episode happening on Tuesday. It's all, an all flubs episode. So... Yes. Yeah, we're having our buddy Dan Opsalon, who is the flub master. Like, he's, a, he's an academic of flubs. When I met him, uh, he, he showed me a folder of flubs that he gets. So if he's watching, uh, you know, a, to- a late night talk show, like Colbert Report or something, and he, he sees a flub, he goes back the next day online and downloads it and then pulls the flub out. He collects flubs. And flubs, Nick and I love flubs. We have flub stories of our own. We have flood story, flood videos to show too. In fact, this is one that we we're not going to show in the upcoming segment. But uh, here's one of our favorite flubs that I wanted to show, but we just didn't have time for it. Uh, this is from Fargo News. Reporting live in North Fargo, Bill Shamert, WDAY Six Nose. <laughs> Classic six flubber. Six nose. And one more time. And One he's ending, ending the segment, so it's, it's kind of got that punctuation. <laughs> it's probably about a murderer or something. Mm-hmm. Reporting live in North Fargo, Bill Shamert, WDAY, six nose. Oh, six <laughs> nose. Six nose. All right, so that's just a little taste. Yeah, George, you can try to track him down. Find well, out. no, his email address was right on the screen. Oh, that's right. So. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, let's find yeah. out what he was thinking there. Um, yeah, ask him why he said nose instead of nudes. He was getting rhinoplasty the next day. Okay. And, ah, it was on the brain. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with Frenchie and the Creep? Everybody wants to know. I know my parents were like, what time does Frenchie and the Creep drop? On uh, <laughs> They literally did I, say that. And I said, oh, they, they're they going to be late this week. I think they're going to be doing one every couple weeks now. But what is the story? Well, we're definitely going to do one this Wednesday. Um, I wasn't able to get to everything that, uh, so therefore, George wasn't able to, to do his part. So, uh, But we'll be on. I think it's going to be a really good episode this week. So definitely tune in. We're back. And maybe we'll do two a week. I mean, the new format is, per, is pretty ambitious. It might take longer to edit. So two a month now. And you're not getting paid jack squat. So <laughs> no. I mean, what's the incentive? There's no motivation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, poor George works all night and then has to get up and record <laughs> stuff in the, uh, in the morning. Yep. Well, otherwise, what would we be doing? Hanging out in cemeteries? So <laughs> yeah. don't, don't feel too bad. Sure, sure. Um, all right, and uh, that's it. And then we're going to do an EP mode, which we haven't decided on. So let us know what you think we should watch for our Patreon backers. If there's any full-length video you'd like to see, let us know. And, la- and the last one, we watched uh, all the Federated Mutual Insurance videos, or actually a bunch of diff- different training videos in their entirety. And, man, that was fun. It's just violence. Yes. It's just constant that violence. That was a great one. Yeah. Oh, oh, one thing real quick to close out on. I, somebody sent this, this on Instagram. I, for, forgive me. I don't, can't remember who it was. But they pointed out that there is an actual St. Plunkett in oh. Drogheda, Ireland. And, um, and the, there's a museum of St. Plunkett. There's St. Plunkett there on the left. It's pretty Ol- plunkety. St. Oliver Plunkett. Um, He's enormous. Yep, from Ireland. So uh, There should be a contest for the person who gets – the first Melinda who gets a shitty photo taken in front of his shrine – get something yes i don't know in, what in but. red robin style so he died in <laughs> 1681 he was uh, the a roman catholic archbishop and a primate of ireland i don't even know what that means and uh Isn't a primate a monkey yeah and okay. uh, so this talks about his whole journey you can let he was canonized in 1975 the last roman catholic martyr to die in england well that's something to and, and he was eight foot on. four yeah, look, at, look that. at that. Yeah. How is he that big? See, this is a great photo of 
saying Oliver Plunkett, so I don't know if this is the true... His hand looks kind of fucked up. Someone should actually do <laughs> art and paint an unflattering photo of St. Oliver Plunkett in this style. You're, you're right. We did do hand Plunkets too, George. His hand oh, does look yeah, fucked up. Oh, yeah, that is sort yeah, of a hand Yeah, that's Plunkett. a total hand Plunkett right there. Okay. That's why they executed him. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, he's a martyr. Yeah. He's a saint. The man with the awful, weird hands. So, anyway... Saint, heal thyself. <laughs> a- action pla- uh, action-packed... Uh, I just flubbed clapped. there. I just flubbed. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting amped for Tuesday. No, Nick, you're absolutely right. It is action plaque. It is. It'll be action plaque. So uh, it wasn't show. a flub. That's exactly what I meant to say. It is action plaque. You're absolutely right. Thanks for watching us here on Six Nose, and we'll be right back right after that. That's all. That's it. And if we had been prepared, we could have done better. Everybody's a puppet when they're dead. He likes visiting auctions, gardening, photography, dressing up as Dracula. Spot on. <laughs> there we go.